Hello, and thank you for taking a few of your minutes to visit my Get Customers Easy. Yeah, this is Ted Sass talking from Omaha, Nebraska. And you should have received a business postcard recently that invited you to check out Get Customers Easy. And when you go to Get Customers Easy website, you will see a series of lines and you'll hear me talking. <laughs> and the uh, business plan that I've created is not an easy one. I mean, it's not one of those things where you can just rattle it off in a couple of sentences. Uh, I apologize, but they say all things come in tons and tons and tons of details you know it's important details are very very important because you want to create value and the way you create value is to have a, a, a have a plan that is chock full of details because the more details there are the more benefits you as business owner and your customers will receive now let's start at the top get customers easy now that's not uh, something that just anybody can do that's in business as you well know uh, even the franchise companies are having a hard time getting more customers but you see they have a lot of customers because they have the marketing and advertising budgets along with the fact that they've been around for 40 50 years 60 years some of them and uh and 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 really the bad part about this whole thing with franchises and even national companies is they've built their business into from an american business where they started out 50 60 years ago 70 years ago and when they got really into the mainstream maturity where in the you know the late uh, early 70s when they woke up and they stopped selling uh, area franchises where they would sell a whole county or even two counties as a franchise they woke up to the fact that those that bought area franchises county franchises or multiple county franchises that they negotiated you know these fellows and ladies would develop a number of stores and they develop a terrific income from those stores uh, from the public in in the areas that they had county domination for their franchise and then uh, they got income adjusted they said hey what you know they it, maybe it took them 10 years 15 years or 20 years to build that terrific business and then they said to themselves well why should i why should i work any harder and build any more stores i'm just going to take it easy well that's good for them but the franchiser the guy the people that sold them the franchise they started seeing their business plateau you know these the big, the big franchise thing started in the 50s, or actually in the 40s, 1940s, and uh, and started to really get uh, hot in the in you know during the 50s. And one of the biggest is the is the is the uh, soft serve uh, uh, franchise that. Uh, that uh, I even own 10 uh, franchises uh, of that particular franchise at Omaha back in the late 60s and early 70s. Uh, and that's the one where you, you know, you had the soft serve cone, uh, the, the, the fake ice cream, so to speak, where you pumped a lot of air into the mix and froze the mix with a, with a special machine and, and created uh, uh, so-called soft serve cones uh and uh and sundays and so forth and then later on they woke up and said wait a minute we can sell food too a lot of the franchisees uh start selling food on their own even 
And uh, even though it was outside the franchise, why they let them get away with it because, uh, you know, they were getting their seven, eight, nine, ten percent for franchise fee off the top, plus uh, another six, seven percent off the top for advertising. So, you know, as long as the money kept rolling in, but then they woke up to the fact that, boy, they weren't able, these people with area franchises were not creating more franchises. So, so they started buying back a lot of those and uh, offered them. And they went and uh, went to, that company went into a terrific debt structure to buy back all these county franchises and multi-county franchises. And, uh, and that created a terrific problem they had to work through. But, you know, the thing of it is, all the franchises, as they become mature in the United States and woke up to selling location addressed franchises rather than the county and multi-county uh, franchises, so letting the franchisee develop stores, they started developing franchise, uh, franchise uh, address franchises that developed the store and they limited that franchise to a certain population uh, and then they went when they ran out and then they went down the street set up another location franchise that's why ever so often in a city when you go down the road go down the street you see another franchise sign and all of course they all group uh, try to group together in areas where uh, the other ones are because they know that's where the traffic is so that's the way that, the, but the real sad part about that whole deal, uh, over the 30, 40, 50 years, uh, they woke up to the fact that they were getting saturated in, uh, after they even went into the smaller cities and markets uh, across the United States and developed franchises there, they woke up to the fact that they were running out of places to sell advertising. For, so what'd they do? They went global. And they built their franchise businesses on the backs of American customers. And to me, that's not a good thing. Now, it is good for the franchise if there's, you know, if there's stockholders in the franchise, they're good for them. But for the customers overall, you have to understand that when you go global with a business, that affects the selling price globally, <laughs> doesn't it? I mean, it costs more to operate a global business than it does a national business. Let's just face it. And uh, as costs rose through the years, it just has is affected. And we see this playing out in the, in the various markets across the United States because the biggest franchises in the business are failing. The biggest, you see it in the headlines. They're failing. Now, why is that? Well, they they got so big that their costs are so high to operate. And yet, when you look at and, and all those costs as they got greater, have affected the cost of the menu of the food they sell, the franchises, or any, any franchise service business. The bigger they get, the more costs they assume, and they pass those through to the individual franchise operator and that individual franchise operator has to recover all those costs through the prices that they use to sell to consumers. Now who suffers? The consumer, the customer suffers, right? Now it's true the customers build the businesses, but without the businesses, the customers don't have service. So while it's the customer that's king, it's also the fact that there would be no kingdom <laughs> for the customers if it weren't for the businesses. So you kind of ha you can't look at one or the other and say this one is responsible for this one or this one's responsible for that one, because it, it it has to be it's a balance between the market, the demand, and the service of the product, and and it's split up by categories. And that's our economy. The customers drive the economy, but the businesses supply the economy. So both are critical. And the way this all works is that the franchise businesses have, a, have an advantage because they have 
a, a marketing budget that they can use and it applies to the brand wherever the brand is located. And that means that those stores have an advantage over the local independent business owner. Now you see there, while I've been gabbing on and on and on, that uh, there is a way to get customers easy and the only place that you can get those customers in large numbers is from two places. One from the franchise operators and secondly from the same category of business that you operate your business in because there's there's uh, there's not only is there the disposable income that's a concern for everybody that's in business how much of this money does the customer have to spend after they pay that you know the must pay they got to pay their house payment they got to pay their rent they got to buy food they got to have gas to get to work they got to have clothing uh, they got to have their the, uh, things for their children uh, or uh, and when after they get done paying all and then you know maybe they got a car payment or some other furniture payments or credit card payments or whatever after all those things are taken care of then what's left over that's a that's a disposable income that they can use to purchase whatever they want to purchase well the thing of it is over the years the income has become the income growth for customers has become the stagnant it hasn't risen with the costs of buying goods and that's another reason why the franchise companies especially the food companies are in trouble today because they can't they've hit the ceiling as far as what they can charge and you know it's like the candy bars you know they used to be a real big and taste real good but you know with the with the increase in the ingredients and everything if you've noticed I don't know some of you that have been around a little longer like me you know if you notice that really the candy bars don't they're not as big as they used to be are they <laughs> in other words you know if they can't keep raising the price you know we buy the candy bars so so they've got to reduce that candy bar uh, uh, the the net weight of that candy bar and the ingredients that go into that candy bar in order to keep from raising so the candy bar doesn't cost as much to produce and and then that allows them to inch the price up now look they cost more today than they used to you used to be able to you know get a candy bar for 10 cents but today it's like 60 70 80 90 cents uh, you know for a candy bar depending on the size you buy but so those prices have gone up but the candy bars have gotten smaller or the prices have got up what they'd be higher than they are today probably by double or triple even even though they are that much higher than they used to be even while the candy bar has gotten smaller so all of that talk really comes down to trying to explain some of the problems associated with getting customers and getting customers easy because if you're a local independent business owner which is what this is all about you'll see right down the line here when we come to independent business owners right here local independent business owners those are the ones that have a problem getting customers getting customers easy because they don't have the advertising budget and the media has grown like the franchise companies and like the national companies have over the last 30 40 50 60 years and they've gotten to the point where they've they have networked uh, the purchasing has networked so that they buy out these radio stations and they have networking uh, uh, reach as far as their audience is concerned and that allows them to charge more for their radio spots and TV spots or their size of the ad in the newspaper and so on and so forth but now we're seeing that's not even working because we see the largest newspapers failing we see the largest radio station network uh, group radio uh, owners failing we see them going into bankruptcy because 
uh, because they've raised their prices, raised their prices for their advertising. And every time they do that, <laughs> it's a curious business model because every time they get bigger, they raise their prices and they limit the number of people, number of businesses they can sell their advertising to. You know, there's over 18 million local independent business owners there in every city, every small town, every rural town in Nebraska, you have small independent, local independent business owners, 18 million of them. Actually, there's probably 24, 25 million. It's just that many of the, between the 18 million and the 24, 25 million, you've got people f filing individual income taxes. They're not filing a business income tax because they're not registered as a business. But in, in actuality, they are running a, their own local independent business themselves. They're an independent business, even though they file a, a regular tax return as a as a citizen taxpayer. So, okay, so how, when we're, when you're sitting here and, and the franchise companies have 40% of a market, and you have to realize that when we're talking about, let's talk about the food business, because that's where, that's where most of my membership programs concentrates on, because people got to eat, and they have to eat every day, and so many people, both of lady and the, and the man in the household, they work. So when they're out during the day, they have to eat at lunch. And a lot of them used to carry a, a, a brown bag to lunch, but they're, they, you know, they had a lunch that they carried. A lot of people still do that. But more and more and more, there's delivery, and there's people that run out quick to get something at the uh, lunch, uh, at the uh, food places that are close to their work during the during the lunch hour. Now, then they get off work and they come home in the late afternoon, early evening, and wow, they, they're tired. They've worked all day. And, and more and more and more, we see people they don't want or to cook at home. If they do, it's a lot of it is, uh, you know, convenient stuff. And that's why you see so much of the frozen food section at the supermarkets where all this convenient food that's in a box and frozen, you throw it in the oven, throw it in the uh, uh, microwave, and, and boom, within a, just a short time, you got a meal ready to eat. And, uh, and then, but the big, there's a big increase in the delivery of food to the homes. And also in the fact that people have, uh, go out and quick drive through, uh, a restaurant or a food place and pick up something to eat and take it home and rather than sit there and, and try to make it themselves. Uh, and so that part of the business is uh, an established market and, and you see these businesses in different categories and this is important, different categories that are that are uh, all doing business now. If let's just say that you're not an independent, or you're a, you're not a franchise, and you're not a national company, but you're in a category of food. Let's say you run an independent pizza store. Okay. Now, if you're an independent pizza store owner, you not only have to compete for the disposable income. The amount of money that every customer has left over after they pay everything they have to pay before they decide to buy a pizza or can buy a pizza. You not only uh, fight for that disposable income, but now in addition to that, you have to fight every other local independent business owner in your city and every other franchise pizza place in your city to sell your pizza. Now that's what you want to do. You want to sell your pizza. So how do you get more people to buy your pizza rather than pizza from everybody else in town that is an independent pizza store owner and a franchise pizza place? How do you get their customers? And how do you get those customers that are buying pizza from those places to come over to your independent pizza place? and buy your pizza. That's what my plan does for you. And I can, 
I can prove to you that my plan will get customers for you. And not only that, but it'll get customers easy for you. Now, how do we go about that? Well, first of all, if you're going to get customers away from franchise operators that sell pizza, now we're talking about pizza, but we could be talking about a barbecue business. We could be talking about a, uh, a, a submarine sandwich shop business. We could be talking about a fish uh, business. We could be talking about a Mexican restaurant, Mexican food restaurant business. Any one of the categories that if you go to a, if you go to a Yellow Pages business directory and you uh, look at that and you'll see up in the right hand corner there, you'll see the category of restaurant that's on that page. And then you look on that page and it shows you all the different categories that are in that. Uh, so if you get to the pizza category, then it'll list all the pizzas that are in that town and that business directory that that business directory covers the area it covers. Uh, and it'll show you all the pizza play. Then the next one you go to, it'll show you the businesses that are in that category. So that's the way that w this thing is designed because because we want to target your particular category and we want to target the people, the customers that live in or work in the zip code or the carrier route that you operate your business in. All right. Now that's why I call my program Zip Code Carrier Route associates actually I shorten that up it's zip code associates and uh, I use but I have both zip code associates and 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 zip code carrier out as the branded program to uh, ward off the bottom feeders that want to copy my business plan so all right but you have to understand the reason why I categorize it this way is that we we have not only the category in business but we isolate the categories in zip codes and even carrier routes why is that because you'll see down here after business advertising by category which is my plan it's by category we see that the zip code category is at a zip code exclusive okay now that you you have to understand what that means. That means that if you're a local independent business owner and you're approved in my business plan, you don't have to fight the franchises in this business plan or the national retailers because they know they are not in the business plan. They can't get in. I don't sell it to them. Okay, and I sell one category in a zip code or a carrier route up here see so what that means is if you're approved in other words if you uh, apply with to get into my business plan and i check to see whether or not there is already a local independent business owner with that category of business in the zip code where your business is and you're in that category well you have to go on a waiting list because I only have one. Now, why do I do that? Well, it's uh, common sense. I mean, you if you're going to pay money for advertising, you have to know that you're going to get a rate of return that allows you not only for your uh, advertising to be effective, but it has to be efficient, too. It has to return you more money and hopefully a lot more money than what it costs you to buy it. Otherwise, uh, what's sense advertising? And frankly, with the costs of advertising what they are today, and the fact that no advertising sells exclusive uh, advertising categories, uh, it's, it, it's a real problem for local independent business owners to increase their customer share uh, and, uh, you know, get out of this problem of, uh, of uh, more or less uh, dominating, say, in a small uh, geographical or small population area 
or having taken years and years and years to build up a reputation where you got people coming across town to come to your store. If you're a local independent minister over, over here, let's say you've started up recently, you know, you want to be in the food business. You want, it's pretty easy to get in the food business, uh, actually. Uh, and uh, so you've started up, but you're battling all these local, bigger businesses in the food businesses that have captured a big customer base but, but, but really, basically, because they've been around so long. I mean, uh, uh, I started out in Omaha and myself in the early 60s, and a lot of the businesses in town today that are big as they are were operating at that time. Now, that tells you how long they've been around, and quite frankly, that's re along with the fact that they, you know, sell good food, no problem there, it gives good service, been around a long time. But if you're starting up a food business, you got to battle that reputation. you got to battle people, customers that are going to that place, and you got to get them away from them over to your new food business in that category if you're going to be really successful like they have been. And that's a tough thing to do. That is a, one of the toughest thing to do is get, if you're in business, is in a certain kind of a business, is for you to try to get people that are going to your competitor in that same category of business. And that customer has been going to that competitor for a long, long time, and they really like it. Have you ever heard somebody talk about a business that they, uh, they like to go to, and they'll brag and brag and brag on it, and uh, and and one of the reasons why is it's a popular place, and they like to tell people I go to popular places, don't they? Sure they do, and there's nothing wrong with that, uh, but that's what you're battling if you're a local independent business owner, especially if you are one in the uh, groups of businesses that have been started, say, in the last five. Uh, 10 years, something like that. You've got to battle all these established food places by categories now. Now that's tough to do because you the people, uh, they get in a rut, they get in a habit, they get satisfied with where they're going, they like to go there, they like to talk about the fact that they go to popular places. Uh, and then you've got that category of customer that's always out there and they're always looking around, they're always trying new things and they're, you know, in this mix too of, of categorizing those customers, uh, getting them to come to you Okay, so they're curious and they're moving around, they're going here, they're going there, they're trying this one, they're trying that one. But to get them to keep, after they try you, to get them to keep coming back to your business. See, put them in a position where they choose to come to you, away from where they've been going, or away from this idea that I want to be moving around and trying places. If you've got something strong enough that can get them to come to you and stay with you, uh, that's that's the key. That's the silver bullet you're looking for. Now, how do we do that, get customers easy? Well, let's talk about capitalism, zero profit. Now, capital, now see, that's a little different concept, isn't it? When we think of capitalism, we take the zero out. We say capitalism, profit. Okay, well, you see, you kind of have to do things a little different if you want to be different. If you want to be a customer, if you want to have customer magnetic. Yeah, if you want to have customer magnetic, that means your customers are magnetized. You come into your business that's magnetized. Then you have to have... You have to have a unique approach. You have to be a unique magnet. Well, in order to do that, I've come up with this idea now. Look, you're still going to be making a profit. Don't let me scare you. This capitalism zero profit has to do with advertising and marketing. You see, because when you, in the first place, uh, you, if you're a local independent business owner, you, you can't even advertise. You can't buy advertising 
but that is advertising has to be done on a regular basis it's like you if just think uh, all the advertising you see is by the franchise of big companies that have the advertising budgets and do they advertise you know once every three months or <laughs> no they're on the tv they're on the radio they're in the magazines they're in the newspapers all the time all the time you know Week in and week out, day in and day out, month in and month out, all year long, they're advertised because they've got the advertising budget. But you as a local independent business owner, you don't have that advertising budget. You might be able to send a postcard, but that's about it. That, uh, and even that is, as far as I'm concerned, just like throwing your money out on the street. Because uh, while direct mail is one of the most popular and, and the one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, uh, form of advertising and marketing, unless you're dropping a hundred thousand, hundred thousand of of the postcard of your business, yeah. Unless you're dropping a hundred thousand or or a million, actually, when you get right down to it, it should be a, you should be looking at a million or five million or ten million. Uh, forget it. You, your 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 rate of return. Uh, is not going to direct mail advertising. It's a commonly held fact that it runs two to three percent if you're lucky. If you've got the right combination, if you've got the right offer, if you've got the right design piece, uh, two to three percent. Uh, that's why the big business has dropped the drop a, a minimum of ten thousand at a crack and that's then that's really the only way that works is if you do like the, <laughs> this franchise outfit that stuffs coupons and envelopes and they sell most of the stuff you see the coupons you see in and <laughs> in those are national companies there are very few local companies you ever see in there and, and but they, because these and they're they're the way they sell that they drop ten thousand uh, in a zip code See in a zip code, and why is that? Well, because the zip code is 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 a concentrated area of population, and but that's not even covering uh, anywhere near the population in a zip code ten thousand. So 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 they're trying to target by profiles by using certain zip codes relative to the kind of business that's advertising and so on and so forth. And then if the if the and they don't and these big businesses they don't go in one, a zip code drop uh, in just one zip code they they'll you know they're if they're going uh, uh, going across the country uh, they'll they'll pick zip codes in every one of the uh, locations that they want to target and because they have the big budget the big advertising budget. So the postcard advertising for the local independent business owner is a waste of time because you can't, on a 2 to 3%, what it costs you to drop postcards by your now. Realize I sent you a postcard, but I'm sending a postcard that says get customers easy. And when you got that postcard, you looked at that and you said get customers easy. <laughs> Well, what's he talking about there? What are they talking about there? I want to see what that is. And boom, you're on the website, getcustomerseasy.com. Well, then you listen to me talk, and some of this stuff that you see here, you don't see the way the other stuff. You all see all these so these glitzy designs and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, all that stuff, the advertising designs, the advertising agencies that are involved, they're all charging money. They're using specialized design people, specialized marketing people, uh, specialized production uh, uh, videos and uh, and printing and all these things. And everybody they outsource that work to, that work product to, is adding a, is costing a certain amount of money. The ad agency puts their profit on top of that and sells it to the advertising, uh, the advertising client, and then the and then they 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 do the advertising buying with the local big medias, and and it's and it's the look, let's get right down to where where you live, local independent business owner. Hey, the cards are stacked against you, but not here, because 
In capitalism zero profit that I've designed, there's no profit in the advertising investment that the members make. That's why I call it boomerang membership income. That means that there's a written membership agreement that says all the money that every member puts in that's approved is returned to the membership. And, okay, so you say, well, how in the world can that be? Uh, nobody, how can you sell advertising and not make a profit? Well, the point is, I'm not trying, first of all, I'm not trying to make a profit. If you're, I'm trying to help you as an independent business owner take customers from your competitor in your category. If you're approved, then you're in like Flynn, okay? And everybody else has to wait on the waiting list for you to go out of business or pass on or, 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 because, uh, because that's the only reason you'd get out of it, frankly. Uh, but uh, because here, because of the cost, because of the investment. It's not a cost, it's an investment. $30 a year and $9 a week. Now, all of that money, everybody that's approved in a city uh, in the membership program by category is uh, used to promote the business. And there's a budget for that, okay? Now, you say, well, how in the world can you do that? that? That must be a scam, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, that's natural for you to say that. But you see that line right there that says CPA approved, CPA audits online? Well, <laughs> that means that and I know, look, I, I've been around in sales uh, for uh, long decades and decades. And I care, I've carried a sales bag from the time I was a young person. And I, and I was a specialized salesperson. I, I didn't call back to get my orders. I learned real easy, real early in sales that uh, you had to get into a thing. You had to be, first of all, a commissioned salesperson so nobody could put a cap on your income. And if I found out that I I was getting uh, the, the sales organization I, were, I was selling for, if I found out that uh, the way they were organized or what was going on or how they were uh, organizing their sales program and their pricing and so on, that I was being limited as to the amount of commissions I was I could earn, I went through the door. I was gone. Well, my wife used to get just absolutely apoplectic because, I mean, she never really complained to me, but I know that it affected her. And I have, because, well, I'd walk off from a job and I didn't have a job. Now, why did I, and people, might have thought I was stupid. But look, I know when you're a salesperson and you know that you have the ability and experience to go out and present a product and present and get the product that you can sell that you found out from experience. You, it only takes a couple of weeks for you to find it if you're an experienced salesperson. Only take if you work hard. It only takes a couple of weeks to find out if you can sell something or not. Because if you get more no's than you do yeses of a day when you're out working, and that continues, if you're on <laughs> if you're on straight commission, well, you find out in a hurry, hey, hey, I, I'm spending my time here on something that's I'm spinning my wheels. <laughs> I'm not earning anything here. So, so you know, and I've had my, everybody has failures. I don't care who you are, you're going to fail if you try. If you don't try, you're going to fail, period. But if you try and you keep trying, and you keep trying, and if you get it, if you run up against a stone wall and, and you say, wait a minute, you figure out, you know, I ain't going to go through that wall. I'll figure out I have to go over it. I have to go under it. I go around it. I have to do something different. And so what I would do when I ran into that kind of a situation with what I was selling, I went somewhere else and found something else to sell. <laughs> and yeah, I had my dry periods like anybody else, but Overall, I had a good sales career, and I did well, and uh, and I had to move on, but uh, things, you know, circumstances, whatever. But uh, anyway, back to this situation. Uh, the thing of it is, this uh, is a agreement, a, a membership agreement that is written, and it says all the money that uh, members that are approved by categories of business owners by zip codes and carrier routes in cities and across the country 
are all that money is going to be put into an advertising program, marketing program for the individual member's benefit and to certify that and to verify that, my branded program is Certified Public Accountant Verified and Certified Public Account Audits Online. And that simply means that a state licensed CPA contractor that is, that is contracted by the membership does an audit on all of the membership income and publishes a financial statement that shows all of the income for the membership and all of the expenses, the money that came in, the members paid in, what that money was used for. And there's a budget that is included with the membership agreement. And it, and it lays out the various categories of the budget. And when that, and, and that is explained based on the fact that the budget is structured so that it's based on a program to acquire members. And every, every business owner knows that in a membership program, somebody, somebody has to sell. There has to be a program to acquire new members to get income coming in for the membership to use to promote the membership. So I have to have a budget of the money that comes in to acquire new members, acquire new member chapter cities. And that is that is member acquisition expense. And that is set in the budget at 15% of the total membership income. And that's a 15% is a fair amount of the total uh, membership income. Then uh, the next uh, category of expenses is the IT, the uh, website expense and cost of hosting and so on and so forth. That's 15%. Okay. And then that, so that's 30%. Now then the next of the budget is for the really exciting pro program as for weekly cash awards. That is to say that the member earlier I talked about, if you're a local independent business owner, and we talked about pizza stores, if you're an independent pizza store, you're one of, of say, <laughs> in Omaha, I don't know how many there are, it's a couple hundred, whatever, whatever it is, you're one. And most of those, 40% of those are franchises that have an established regular marketing advertising budget that's put, that they pay off the top that the franchise uses to promote the brand and the brand is you wherever you're located in the city so your population and your location where you're at that franchise you've got your advertising you've got your coupons that are out there all the time for the customers that's what you're battling as one local independent business owner and also you've got all the other independent pizza owners in your city that you're battling against trying to get customers from them so none of those however none of the other local independent business owners who are pizza store operators offer weekly cash awards and none of the franchises offer weekly cash awards but if you're a member of my program you are approved local independent pizza shop in a zip code in my one of my chapter cities you can offer weekly pizza weekly cash awards because 50 percent of the money that the pizza category members approve pay into my program is used to create the weekly cash awards fund and then that is set at a fixed value let's just say it's $25 uh, okay a week uh, that is used 50% uh, of all the membership that's paid in by the pizza store owners and then customers sign up at no charge for weekly cash awards and then a fixed amount of that fixed amount of the weekly cash awards is used to go down the list as far as that fixed value 
pays for the weekly cash awards and then those people get their weekly cash awards that they can come to you in to your pizza store and and use it to purchase pizza with okay so if you'll notice uh, uh, right above there it says nine dollars weekly for approved member investment so nine dollars weekly is if there's a thousand pizza store owners in this category and and half of it is being used that means there's forty five hundred dollars a week for pizza awards weekly All right if you take forty five hundred and divide that by twenty five if it's twenty five you've got a hundred and eighty people a week that are that you offer that you're offering the the, the pizza store owners in that are approved in in a chapter city that's offering 180 customers a week and if you've got 10 uh, zip codes in a city that's 18 new customers a week now uh, they say uh, uh, new how do we say they're new well because if you're a pizza store owner today you probably have a list of customers that are signed up on a some kind of a uh, weekly or a uh, email marketing program so you can send them emails uh, and if you do then the ones that sign up for weekly cash awards that email list is used as a uh, as a filter against your list and it only it excludes the that's mixed with your list and the new ones that sign up if they're if those emails are in your list then those two are matched and they're excluded out so that only the people who sign up with emails that are outside of your email list are the ones that are awarded weekly cash awards okay now software does that filtering and exclusion for you so this is uh, the way that you can guarantee to yourself that when people come with that weekly cash awards they're not your normal customers that are already come we have another way in my program to benefit them which i'll talk about in the next video okay but because you you can't you can't offer a program uh, like mine uh, to just new customers you have to have the same program uh, another part of the program uh, that offers a benefit to your regular customers that doesn't let them out in the cold so to speak and it's just as important just as good as the weekly cash awards but we want to use the weekly cash awards and target the new customers and then when we use the cloverleaf my cloverleaf coupon award for that you can that you'll be able to use as an approved member in my plan cloverleaf coupon uh, is a concept that I created called progressive pricing coupons and this is a dynamic program to to uh, to uh, once you have a customer or for your customers that you already have in my program uh, my progressive pricing coupon strategy uh, that is a branded uh, cloverleaf coupons is an exciting way that you can offer uh, to your present customers because here's the problem with a present customer a present customer you have to understand every time they go out to eat they're not coming to you they're coming to you sometimes but they're going to other places aren't they too because nobody eats at the same place all the time <laughs> so uh, so you have got to come up with a way that you can among the various categories that are in my business plan because they're not going to come to you all uh, all the time even with my cl uh, cloverleaf uh, progressive pr uh, coupon uh, cloverleaf coupons progressive pricing uh, coupon strategy they're not but they're going to come to you more often than they've been coming for two reasons number one the categories that they may have been going to that are in your category that 
they go to you sometime and sometime to the other category. The weekly cash awards uh, are not going to be involved there, but the coupon, progressive pricing coupon, is going to be is going to be involved for that customer, and that is going to encourage them and motivate them to come more to you because they get more coming to you than they do going to the other store when they want that's the same category when they want to go to a different place and I'll explain that in my next video so let me just uh, uh, summarize this quickly here this is a program that's designed for marketing advertising membership associates it's another name for as I mentioned the zip code carrier out zip code associates there's another name for that. Another brand is Marketing Advertising Membership Associates. And I do thank you for listening to my explanation uh, of the first part of this uh, program uh, that explains my membership benefits to the uh, benefits that are related to your option to apply for membership to acquire the benefits of my business plan for you. Get customers easy. <laughs> Now, you may choose to ask questions of me. I can answer any question you choose to ask of me. Just send me an email to set up a convenient time for you so we can speak online. As I use an online conference room, you and I can easily enter together. Send me an email so we can find a time that is suitable for you. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you have a wonderful 2018 year. <laughs>